Moisture intrusion can wreak havoc on a home and negatively impact the health of its occupants. For those of you that perform mold assessments, it is crucial for you to know the signs of the silent culprit. There are different visual and non-visual indicators of moisture intrusion, including noticeable mold and mildew. These are two of the most visible signs that you encounter on site. These typically appear as fuzzy or slimy patches on surfaces, and they come in a variety of colors, including black, green, and pink. On the other hand, you'll also encounter staining and discoloration. Water stains often appear as brown, yellow, or dark green patches on walls, ceilings, and other surfaces. These can be a sign of water damage caused by moisture intrusion. So, whenever you notice discoloration on surfaces, you'll need to address the source of it and repair any damage caused by it to prevent further issues. The final indicator of moisture intrusion is peeling or warped materials, such as paint, wallpaper, wood, laminate flooring, or drywall. Additionally, non-visual indicators, such as musty odors, increased humidity levels, and unexplained health symptoms. Now that you know the signs of moisture intrusion, it's time to dive deeper into the tools and techniques used for moisture inspection. Now let's go through the steps on how to properly assess and document moisture intrusion. First, you will want to use a floor plan app like Magic Plan to document all aspects of the job and quickly scan and sketch each room before you begin your inspection. For this, it is important that you create a digital checklist in advance to make sure that all the data you're collecting for your jobs is done so in a unified way. To accomplish this, you can use custom attributes or forms that you create in the Magic Plan Cloud and open up in the application. To start off, I'll show you an example of a custom attribute that I created for our temperature and humidity measurer. This is a really, really great feature of Magic Plan that allows you to have text-based answers, yes-no answers, photo capturing options, all directly attached to the attribute section of your object. The great part about this is that it's very flexible. You can put this on whatever type of object you want. You can put it on specific elements and floor plans. It's entirely up to you. And this is something that you can designate whether or not it shows up in your final report. Now, alternatively, if you just want to have one big form that you have in the general project information that captures all info regarding a project without going into each individual object, you can do something like this moisture log that I have here under our custom forms option. This is really a great alternative if you just want to have one big form that your technicians or whoever is on site fills out all in one fell swoop and captures all the information that you need for a project. So first we're going to want to create a new project in the app. This is really easy just by clicking the plus button in the top right. And here I'll go into the details for the project and give this a name called Moisture and Mold Inspection. After I've created the project, we're going to want to add the first floor, I'll just select ground floor here. And let's go ahead and insert a room. Now you have four options here. You have the scan with camera option, great if you have a LiDAR device. Um, square room option if you're working with a quadrilateral room, something really simple. You have the defined corners option for your more abstract room shapes. Maybe you have an L-shaped room or something that's not quite a square. Or if you have a two scale import that you want to import and draw over top of, you can use the last option as well. For the demonstration today, I'm just going to do a square room and we'll do a living room. And after I zoom out a little bit, I'll show you some of the most important objects that you're going to want to use when you're creating this floor plan for a moisture and mold inspection. So for me, restoration and annotations are the two most important that you'll be using. So here I have a humidity temperature measure. We were taking a look at the custom attributes earlier in the cloud. Go ahead and drop this in here just to show you how you add one. And then we'll go back and take a look at the annotations. And here I have a photo icon. Now I like the photo icon because you can place this down in the room, adjust the orientation, and you can actually attach photos directly to this if you wish. Um, it's a really great tool that you can use to get really well oriented in their exact location photos within a floor plan. And then we'll go back and take a look at that form I was talking about earlier. Let's go to the moisture and mold damage form here. And you'll see that I have all these questions that I predefined in the cloud available to be filled in. So I'll go ahead and attach those photos here. I'll just select two photos right here. I'll click add. You can do bulk add or individual photos it's up to you. Here's a list answer where I can go and select one of the list options if I want. And once I scroll down, you'll see a couple other of the options that we have, such as a number value answer or a free text answer. 
And this is what forms look like in the application. Really a great tool if you're trying to capture all the information in one questionnaire. So once your inspection is complete, it's time to start sharing this file. So under files and sharing, you'll see we have our sharing options like invite collaborators or share the project with other Magic Plan users. Or you can export PDFs. We have sketch files like JPEG files, SVG files, um, and you can also send a copy by email. And all of these exports can be customized with your company information under your account settings back at the home screen. So under my account, company profile, I'll be able to add a logo, be able to add name, contact info, address, and adjust the transparency of the watermark on your exports. So for this type of inspection, you have non-invasive and invasive methods. For non-invasive inspection methods, you can use tools like a thermal imaging camera. A FLIR 1 camera is a great example of how areas of different temperatures can be measured. These temperature differences can indicate areas of moisture intrusion, making it easier to detect hidden moisture issues. For example, if there is moisture behind a wall, the temperature in that area may be different than the surrounding areas. Overall, infrared thermography is a great tool in your arsenal for detecting moisture intrusion on site. You can also use moisture meters like this one to detect and measure the severity of moisture in all different types of contents throughout a property, such as the walls and wood and drywall, etc. So it's really important to not only document what is the measurements that you're getting, but then afterwards to also take a picture of those measurements so that you have double the proof that this was the measurement, this was the time it was taken at for insurance, for adjusters, etc. For non-invasive inspection methods, a bore scope connected to your phone is a great alternative when you're trying to take photos of hard to reach places. Here I have one connected directly to my mobile device. I can come over to this radiator here, slide it behind the radiator, take a picture, and then I can access this photo and add it back to Magic Plan super easy. Last but not least, taking samples is going to be your best friend. This is going to be your best option when it comes to finding out specifically what are you dealing with, how big the issue is, and it's gonna help you plan what is your path to resolution for the property that's affected. And that's a wrap on moisture inspection techniques. Remember, precision and proactivity are key. If you found this guide valuable, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. See you in the next tutorial.